So someone on Discord around this time linked me a paper. Actually, it was before this, uh, but I bookmarked it. They linked me a paper by Thomas Jacobson, which explains how they implemented a physics system for the first Hitman game, right? It was one of the first games that had really good ragdoll simulation. And the paper kind of explains how to do that, right? And um, if you Google the terms from the paper, Verle integration, then you're probably going to find tutorials and other papers that do physics in a very particular way, which is instead of having like a cube, you'll have a um, series of eight points. And all of those points, which are the points of the cube, will be connected by sticks, right? The only thing that physics applies to is the points themselves. So any gravity will affect each point individually. Wind or whatever forces um, will affect each point individually. And then the sticks are there to make sure that the points stay kind of at the right length. So, well, I'll put it on the screen, but uh, you can make a cube out of only a few of these uh, sticks and points. But um, that's, I found out later, that's not actually what Verley integration is. I think that's a misunderstanding that a lot of people have just because of the current literature. Anyway, that's kind of beside the point. So I, after a while, you know, I was using this Verley integration, but in 3D I was getting tons of weird errors and I found out they're not actually errors. Um, it's just kind of how the system works. And if you want to get something like the physics in Hitman, you still need to implement a rigid body system and then use that in conjunction with the particle and stick system. So, I started reading a bunch of academic papers about physics, but because my high school math is, well, my math is not even at high school level, actually. I was having a hard time reading the formulas. Uh, luckily, a lot of the papers actually explain the formulas at the beginning or the terms that they're using. Um, and if you read the papers slowly, you can kind of understand most of, at least the ones that I read, you can understand them just by reading them from beginning to end. I think we're used to, um, in the age of the internet, we're used to skimming things, just finding a little bit that we need, but with papers, they seem to be a lot more dense. Um, so it's probably worth your time actually reading from the beginning, if you find yourself reading papers and having this same issue. Anyway, so during this period of reading papers on my Kindle before bed, I started getting some more issues with data corruption with the physics engine. So of course, instead of figuring out the problem, I switched my programming language again, and then this time rewrote everything again in Zig again. So this is, I think the second time I went to Zig. So what did we do? C, Zig, my own programming language, C, Zig. And well, now I'm back in C. So of course, at that point, I knew in the back of my mind that I was using Zig not because it's an excellent language and would be the best tool for the job, even though it, it is a really nice language and it might be the best tool for the job. But I knew I was using it because I didn't have the fundamental uh, knowledge that I really needed to figure out where I was going wrong with C. All right, so around this time, one day during my lunch break, I was watching an episode of Zig Showtime. And the guest this time was someone named Abner Coimbre. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, I actually hadn't heard of Abner before, but I should have, because he is the person who actually started the Handmade Network website, and he's previously worked for Tekla, which is Jonathan Blow's company. He was working on the Jaya compiler. In this episode, Abner highly recommended a textbook called Computer Systems, A Programmer's Perspective. After listening to him speak for more than an hour, it was pretty evident that he knew his stuff. So persuaded by his arguments as well as random Casey and John Rance that I listen to every now and then, I decided to buy the book. And I switched back to C and then I started working through my copy of KNR, which I just had sitting on my shelf. And I also started working through this new textbook. So I'm only a few chapters in and it's apparent that I still have a lot to learn and I've wasted a lot of time kind of redoing my own work over and over again for no gain. Um, but now I'm pushing forward and I'm not going to jump ship. If there's an issue again, I'm just going to figure out what the problem is and fix it. If you ever find yourself in a similar situation where you're thinking, 
Alright, you know, I've just... I've been trying to build this thing, and it keeps erroring out on me, and I can't fix it. I'm just gonna start again. You know, I'm not against starting again, if you really need to, but... As you can see, I've just spent five months starting again and changing programming languages five times. And... Yeah, I know a bit more than I did at the beginning, but I think it would have been better if I just didn't switch. And I just took the time to learn the fundamentals and figure out what was actually going on. So, I guess the message is, don't waste your time by thinking that, you know, it has to be perfect. Of course, data corruption, you can't really put up with that. You can't just leave it in your game. Um, but I guess just stick with the thing that you're doing and fix the problems and if you can't come up with a solution study the fundamentals because once you get even a little bit more of an understanding then it's going to become clear what the problems could be whereas when you don't understand those base layers that you're working on top of at all it's just a mystery you know it's just everything is fog and you don't know what the problem could be you don't even have any idea there's a set of zero problems that could be the issue. So that's my message. Um, hope it helped. I'll see you soon.